I used to have the perfect life. When I lived in San Francisco, I would wake up at exactly 7 a.m. And I would go to the best coffee shop in San Francisco. And I knew that it was the best coffee shop in San Francisco because it had five stars on Yelp. And then I'd get on my bicycle and I would ride a perfectly optimized route from my home to work. It took exactly 15 minutes and 37 seconds for me to get there. It was the best route. And I was working as a software engineer at Google, which in many ways was my dream job. I'd always wanted to move to California and work in software. When I lived in San Francisco, though, I used to stay up late at night. I used to stay up late at night and wonder why, even though I had optimized my life to, to fit my preferences for, for everything, why, even then, I felt like I was out of control of my life, right? I didn't have control of my life. And so one day I was reading this academic paper, um, and it was about uh, a GPS trace. So if you take a person's GPS trace, the list of places where they have been for the past week, and you feed it into this computer algorithm, it can predict with surprising accuracy where you're going to be on the following day. And I found this like super fascinating, like pretty, pretty cool, actually. But I also found it pretty terrifying. Because I started thinking about my perfect routine, my hyper-optimized schedule, and I realized that if you fed that schedule into this algorithm, you could totally predict where I was going to be the following day. And that was a little scary because if the computer knew me so well that it could figure out where I was going to be the next day, where did that leave me? Like, where was my role in that? Was I living my life for myself, or was I just playing out this script that someone else or something else had written for me? And so I started designing a new way of living for myself that was based on randomness and unpredictability rather than my preferences. And living in this way totally transformed my life. It consumed me, it obsessed me for two and a half years, and uh, changed the way that I think about the world. So bit by bit, I started taking all the decisions that I made in my life, things that I normally would use my preference to decide, and letting the computer decide for me. So for instance, if I was to go to a bar or a restaurant, instead of choosing my favorite place, I would go to a random one that the computer decided for me. I also wrote a program that after the, the computer you know, chose the place, it would call an Uber to my location and tell the Uber driver the random place I was going to, but leave me completely in the dark so that I would be totally surprised when I arrived in the place. <laughs> and the first time I tried this, in, in what may be a sign from the universe, the computer sent me to the local mental hospital, <laughs> which was great. I, I ended up going to a, a bar nearby and had like the time of my life. And um, it was so exhilarating because I had spent my life in San Francisco living in these tiny circles, these, these closed loops, where I kept seeing the same things over and over again. And finally, I was seeing a part of the city that was completely new. And so I started taking this concept and applying it to more and more parts of my life. And the computer sent me to you know, different places in San Francisco, but it also started suggesting things for me to do in my free time. I made a printer that found random suggestions from books, and then I would follow these instructions. Once a day, I would take one and, and try it out. I let the computer choose what music I listened to, and it was totally random every day, something new. I had the computer send me to randomly selected Facebook events. So I was going to an open house at, a, at a, a funeral home, or some guy named Skip's birthday, or a law school graduation. And no matter what it was, and no matter how you know, well it fit what I thought I wanted, I went and tried it out. I am now certified, after a three-hour course, to capture feral cat colonies 
and take them to be spayed and neutered by the ASPCA. The computer chose what I ate, it chose my food, it also chose my fashion. It was, started giving me style tips about how to style and you know, what, what hair to wear. I started wearing wigs and I started letting the computer choose clothing for me to wear. So every, every week or so I would get a new package from Amazon that had a random piece of clothing. <laughs> the computer told me to get a random tattoo selected from all of the images on the internet. And uh, this is what it chose. I, I've actually, I've got it here, it's on my chest. It was a totally random image. And eventually I decided to quit my job at Google and let the computer decide where I lived. And so once every one to two months, I would have the computer select a new city anywhere in the world and I would go there and live for one to two months while doing freelance work. So it sent me to Slovenia, to Dubai, to Vietnam, and, and many other countries in between, and I was constantly discovering new places. And what surprised me the most about this experience was how quickly something that felt initially not a part of my identity, not a part of who I was, and something that was too different for me to, to try it, became my new normal. And suddenly, even though I couldn't even locate Slovenia on a map a couple of months before, I could imagine myself as a cat neutering advocate with a soul patch living in Gortina, Slovenia. And I started thinking about this other way of living that I had in San Francisco where I felt kind of trapped. And I realized that what was trapping me was my adherence to my preferences, the idea that the things that I do and who I am have to accord with the things that I like and don't like. And so in choosing randomly, I, I found some, some freedom. And preferences that also are reinforced by the sorts of computer algorithms that I was exposed to at Google. These are the things that choose what's in your Facebook news feed, that choose what are your first Google search results, that choose what restaurant you, get, you, you, you see on Yelp. These are algorithms that take in your preferences and then purport to understand you better than you understand yourself. Algorithms that are increasingly becoming more popular and I think will start to make more and more of our decisions in the future. And I, I think that we need to think very carefully about the effect that these algorithms are having on our identity and our sense of autonomy. And so, you know, as we enter this more algorithmically generated world, I'd like to invite you to, to think about things um, in a slightly different way. I'd like you to question your preferences. It could be that they're holding you back, that they're, they're putting you into a fixed, small sense of self and making it so you, you don't see things that are outside of what you think that you like. I'd like you to sit with your discomfort. One thing that I found again and again on this random path is that my favorite things, the things that expanded my mind the most, sat behind something that felt a little bit uncomfortable at first. So if, if you're feeling like this experience just doesn't fit with who I am, wait and see if it changes. And then finally, every time you see a product that markets itself as being personalized for you, I would invite you to be a little bit suspicious because oftentimes it's not just about personalizing for you or for making things more convenient, it's also a way to control you. So I'm gonna be around the conference for the next two days and I'm in, I'm in South Africa for a bit. Um, if you need a random suggestion, uh, come say hello. I can give you a random Facebook event, a random place in Cape Town, or even a random tattoo idea. So uh, thank you so much, and uh, see you guys around.